curious about how you can build a realistic floorless coaster in Planet Coaster, check out this video where I break down the typical layout of this coaster type, as well as explaining how you can build custom zero-g rolls and corkscrews. The B&M floorless coaster sits on the track with no floor underneath the riders, allowing their feet to swing freely. This coaster type was first introduced in the late 90s and have now spread to many parks and are a great addition for thrill seekers. The layout exists of several inversions, typically loops, cobra rolls and course crews, with some elements close to the ground or in trenches and tunnels. In my design I chose to include one loop, one cobra roll, one zero-g roll and two corkscrews. As usual, when building any modern roller coaster type, put the banking offset to plus one or plus two to get the correct heartline effect. I prefer plus two, since some of the banking offset will get smoothed out later. When custom building a cobra roll, in my case built by 6 meter pieces, make the climb into the cobra roll increase slightly with each track piece. For example, first 11.25 degrees, then 22.5 degrees, followed by 45, until you have reached the top with 180 degrees. Then bank the next piece 90 degrees, decrease the angle to 22.5, turn it to 45 and extend this specific piece with 2 meters so that the piece is 8 meters. Now you have to repeat the same formula backwards until you have completed the whole cobra roll. When I build zero-g rolls, I tend to go into the roll at an angle of 33.75 with a 22.5 degree banking. After this, I increase the banking to 45, meanwhile keeping the same angle. Next piece is turned to a banking of 90 degrees. Here is also where you want to decrease the angle again, lowering it to 22.5. The next piece is supposed to be the top of the zero-g roll. Here it is important that the banking is exactly 180 degrees and that the angle is set to zero. In my opinion, I like to extend this particular piece to 8 meters. This way the roll becomes less intense and snappy.
when building your own corkscrews, I always use the pre-made in-game corkscrews as a blueprint. After the track layout is complete, I go back and delete half of the corkscrew piece. Then switch to normal track, bank it 90 degrees, turn it to 33.75 and change the angle also to 33.75. Depending on the size of the corkscrew, you might have to extend the track piece slightly for a better fit. For the last piece, just click Autocomplete. Now, why do I not use the in-game pre-made corkscrews? The answer is that, since I want my coasters as realistic as possible, I strive to keep the joints of the coaster track close to around 10 to 14 meters. This is how real-life coaster tracks are manufactured and that's why I don't want the whole corkscrew to be one single piece. I hope it makes sense. To be able to run two trains at the same time, you have to install block brakes along the track preferably somewhere in the final brake run and or at the mid brake run. To enable this, go to Operations. Change the Operation Mode from Standard to Block Section. Then change the number of trains from 1 to 2. The more block brakes you have installed, the more trains you are able to run. Finally, go to Minimum Departure Interval. Change this from 3 seconds to whatever interval suits your coaster. The longer the track, the longer the intervals have to be. The key here is that the first train have to pass the first block break for the second train to enter the first drop after the lift hill. As usual, for the smoothest result, I select two 6 meter pieces, delete them and click autocomplete. I added a simple station and a maintenance building for the transfer track together with the queue and the exit. Here's the final result, please enjoy! Thanks for sticking around until the end. Until next time, take care.